Hey folks, this is a test drive of an EM Smart Mopa desktop fiber laser engraver. The manufacturer has offered this as a free product sample, on the condition that I don't take it apart during our cooperation. <laughs> Sounds like I'm working up a bit of a reputation out there. They insisted even after I told them that that is what makes my videos interesting and what the audience likes to see. Normally I would have just refused, but they had one strong argument on their side. Well, a Mopa desktop fiber laser engraver. You can see right here how I decided. I just wanted to let you know in advance what unusual quality content to expect in this video. I'll be setting up the machine and its computer software, then I'll test some normal material samples and two special use cases. That might illustrate why I'm literally willing to bend my principles for a real Mopa source. The mechanical assembly is very easy. It requires no user manual and only roughly 8 minutes to put this thing into an operational state. I think all EM smart models, and they go all the way up to 60 watt, come in this nice and compact all-in-one machine frame, that even the greatest hoarders should be able to find room for. Careful though, proximity to a PC and fume extraction is necessary for almost all materials. I'll let it occupy my soldering workspace until I find a better spot. Included is an external 24 volt power supply, some lens cleaning tissues some CNC machined positioning helpers for the thread grid plate, a pair of green plastic goggles that doesn't feel as bad as the absolute cheapest model, but without a brand name, a serial number and test certificates it doesn't convince me, and a flash drive with the machine's serial number on it. If you thought that this would contain machine specific configurations, you'd be correct, partially. On this USB drive there is an EasyCAD 2 Lite software, so pretty much the standard software for this kind of fiber laser engraver, but a minimalist low cost version, with only essential features, and a machine specific correct file to import into that software, that ensures that even though all Galvo systems behave slightly differently, a corrected machine will still engrave a circle when told to and not an egg. EasyCAD 2 has a small learning curve but I like it nowadays. It only runs on Windows natively, but the JCZ controller card in the machine is now supported by Lightburn which runs on other platforms. So I imported the correct file into the provided EasyCAD 2 software. But a few things didn't work. I had no red dots which are necessary for finding the correct focus height. This activity indicator LED was never lit. And engraved images were mirrored and rotated. When questioned, my EM Smart contact did not provide a correct solution, just some copy and paste instructions on how to align the two red laser dots. Normally I would not complain about such trivial problems. I would simply pop the lid and find out which controller card pin goes where. But since that is not allowed, I thought I'd mention some settings that I figured out through trial and error. I would recommend returning the Galvo to center after marking something, so that it's ready for focusing on the next part. The mirroring we've seen can be cured by inverting Galvo 1. The laser control tab is mostly correct already. I would just enable pulse width control because we are going to play with that in a moment. The port tab is kind of where digital GPIO pins are configured. The red laser pointer which we need for focusing seems to be connected to pin 4. And the blue activity indicator on the machine's forehead seems to be on pin 5. And this is just a personal preference. I don't like continue mode where you can only start an engraving out of a running preview. But I do like a permanently enabled red dot. Without that you kinda have to start a preview of nothing and click away a warning message in order to get a centered red dot for focusing purposes. These machine specific parameters were not described in any of the manuals I've received. But I'm pretty sure they intend to ship out software configured correctly for every machine they sell. Now we are operational, but I noticed one more small thing which we can fine tune for best performance. While using fast scan speeds and only single passes, I got some streaking or even incompletely filled shapes. That seems to be caused by a setting called start TC microseconds. This time constant is a representation of mirror inertia. If we started lazing and moving a mirror at exactly the same time, we would get overexposure and burning at the start of each movement, where a mirror is still in its acceleration phase between standstill and its programmed velocity. I'm giving the manufacturer a pass for not delivering these time constants perfectly fine tuned from the factory, because these are actually scan speed and therefore material and job dependent. 
One can test these numbers by printing grids and fine-tune them until there are no more gaps or overshoots. Yeah, getting the EM Smart MOPA up and lazing is pretty easy. But finding perfectly balanced settings for a given material or desired look, that takes time and intimate familiarity with the control software. Let's see what we can do with some of the normal materials that have been delivered with the machine. Normal Q-switched fiber lasers can basically be configured through scanning speed, power percent and pulse frequency. Now this MOPA technology that I wanted so badly comes with a powerful new parameter. Pulse width. Honestly, this many degrees of freedom, some of them with correlations to make matters worse, are a bit overwhelming and not easy to understand on an intuitive level. But there is a kind of easy quick start mode, if we just want to noisily zap material specs away from a surface like we used to do with a Q-switched fiber laser source, then we can just imitate that technology's normal parameters. Let's say a 50 kHz pulse rate, 100 nanosecond pulse width, and power and scan speed to taste. Then we just have to position our workpiece normally, pull the trigger, laser goes bzzzt, and we are on familiar grounds. Easy, although I gave it a bit too much power in this case. Gonna try again with a cute vintage Tektronix logo. Generally I would avoid importing bitmap images. Tracing such images and converting them into vector files in Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape seems to yield better results and much more control. But for a quick test EasyCAD itself is able to assign laser power values to pixel brightnesses and just to give it a best shot with line printer mode. There is an option called Disable Mark Low Gray Point. Basically a high pass filter that prevents lasing altogether on a bright background or just mostly white areas. I found it useful occasionally but with high compression low resolution images it tends to lead to stair steppy compression artifacts. After a few test runs on an old SMT stencil, these were my best results. This one turned out very pretty at the cost of the sine wave not showing. Okay, company logos made from a finite number of simple, single color geometric shapes are pretty simple one way or another. But what about infinitely more complicated realistic shapes, such as real world photos or paintings? The function laser power to resulting color on a given substrate is often not very linear. For example, below 20% power a metal surface might just not be damaged at all. So in this conventional pixel brightness to laser power line printer mode, one often ends up with just unrecognizable shapes. EasyCAD 2 offers a potential solution for this. It's called dithering and it converts source image brightness to density of points, which is something that a pulsed laser is obviously very good at creating. It looks terrible in software, which is why I initially dismissed this function categorically. But lo and behold, after some tweaking of contrast and brightness settings, the results are amazing. Yeah, this EM Smart 20 Watt MOPA model is working great now. It's fast and powerful, even though I'm nowhere near to maxing out the Galvo speed or the laser power. The JPT fiber laser source inside apparently specifies a 100,000 hour lifespan. That's over 11 years of 24-7 lasing. As always, these open class 4 desktop laser engravers are not safe legally. If an employee gets injured while working on one of these, there's going to be a world of trouble. But if you're working for yourself as an Etsy seller, a watchmaker, a smartphone repair or a souvenir shop, you can buy or build a full enclosure and follow some simple best practices to make accidents all but impossible. The manufacturer states that they are offering these not electrically interlocking semi-transparent acrylic enclosures. They recommend wearing safety goggles while working on the machine. Their JPT laser source has a 55 degree C over temperature protection. There is an emergency stop button on the front of the machine. And they've shown me this EMC compliance certificate and this SGS certificate for various company activities. This response from the manufacturer illustrates how seriously they are taking their laser safety. I'm going to have to stick with my initial statement though. It's not legally workplace safe, but as a responsible sole proprietor there are ways to ensure that nothing ever goes wrong.
hardware level front facing camera evapor uh, I mean deactivation for the privacy conscious smartphone owner. In such an individual business model I could also imagine this product being a quick return of investment and afterwards turning profitable, especially if you have a sixth sense for niche and nerdy things that people just can't help but fall in love with on first sight. Like this beautiful Inland Empire aluminium business card, huh? Anybody? And now, finally, why MOPA? As I've shown before, and I'm doing again now, this master oscillator power amplifier technology allows very precise control over impulse timing parameters. It could be configured to behave just like a normal Q-switcher, where the pump diodes are configured to a certain power level and a modulator periodically triggers a complete explosive dumping out of all the energy stored in a gain medium, resulting in a surface bombardment and ablation of little specks of material powerful enough to permanently mark natural slate. For many materials such as plastics, thin films or heat sensitive small parts, surface ablation is way too violent though. For those special victims we can use a MOPA source to fine tune the pulse width, down to nanoseconds until we get a just barely visible non-destructive surface effect, instead of a deeply cut swath of destruction. This was done at 20% power, 70 kHz and 12 nanosecond pulse width. Love it, here's a counter example disfiguring a beautiful TS-101. Can you tell which markings were made correctly with a MOPA laser and which are either from a hot stamp or a heavy handed Q switcher? I don't know either to be honest, but this was just a perfect exaggerated example. And there is more, the most famous feature of MOPA lasers is of course color engraving on stainless and titanium. We have such a tight grip on the laser's parameters that we can make it dispense just the right amount of energy into a surface to make it grow a nanometer thin oxide layer on some metals which interacts with reflected light and makes it seem like it has a color. Absolutely no explosive impulse energies this time, just very precise localized heating. This might be a little bit of a gimmick feature because it's purely decorative and it needs lots of fine tuning per material. Also the thin oxide layer is not really stainless anymore, it is in fact chemically vulnerable and might need a protective coating if it is to last. But the technical possibility is enough to get me all excited. And I'm sure we'll find plenty of opportunities to use and misuse this in the future. EM Smart MOPA everybody, pretty awesome. Thank you for watching.